What's going on Island Hoppers today? We are coming to you from Whitefish, Montana. Let's have a look. Whitefish, Montana is known as Montana's outdoor recreation playground with winter activities up on top of the mountain. They have a ski lodge and then down below they have lots of lakes and river activity for those who come in the summer. So Whitefish being a stop along the northern rail system of the United States makes it a part of the Great Northern Railway. By many accounts, Whitefish is considered the best small town in Montana. So let's find out what's going on in Whitefish that makes it so great. Before it was known as Whitefish, it was actually called Stumptown because if you look at some of the old historical photos, you'll notice that they have a lot of stumps in this area where I'm actually standing here in downtown Whitefish and they cut down the trees uh, and before it was called Whitefish it was called Stumptown because of all those stumps you see in those old historical pictures just type into Google and you'll see them but nowadays you won't see very many stumps around the downtown area like you used to in the turn of the century early 1900s now, Whitefish only has a population of about 6,000 people. It's not that big, but as you can see, the downtown area does get hustling and bustling because they get a lot of visitors. Now, as you can see, I was here in Whitefish during June, which is early summer. Uh, but during the winters, Whitefish is the skiing capital of Montana for the last 50 years. So, Whitefish Lake Ski Club. Uh, it obtained a special permit from the U.S. Forest Service and they began building cabins and all sorts of activities up on top of the mountain. If you come here during the winter, you'll notice that there's a lot more snow on the ground as this area does get very, very cold seven months out of the year. After all, we're almost in Canada. This Montana border here is very close to the Canadian border. Also, we're really close to Glacier National Park, which means we're at a fairly high altitude. Sitting at about 3,200 feet elevation, but it's where it's at on the map that makes it really cold. Here's an interesting point to make. 20 years ago, you could buy a home in Whitefish for under $100,000. Nowadays, those days are way gone. The average home price is well over $300,000. Why is that? Well, I guess according to the locals, Californians were moving here, buying homes, sight unseen, just basically saying, is that available and buying it? And now they, they don't have any homes. There's a shortage. Californians moving here. That's who they are saying exactly who it is. But uh, yeah, that's why whitefish is so expensive nowadays. Now it's one of the most expensive places to live in all of Montana. If you guys are enjoying this video, please consider hitting the like button, subscribing to the channel, and turning on the bell to get notified every time we make a new travel guide. We have a series of Montana travel guides coming up for you guys that you will probably want to see. Not just Whitefish. We'll have Missoula Glacier National Park. Anyways, as you're continuing to walk around the downtown Whitefish area, you'll notice they have Quite a bit of pubs at night. This place does come alive with the pubs. Uh, lots of food and uh, entertainment areas in Whitefish. It's small, but it does get going and it can be a fun time. The bars, the pubs, hey, some real Western feeling pubs. Let me tell you that. So what do you say we give you guys a nice casual stroll through the downtown area and then we will pick back up along the river and the lake.
I do want to say something about transportation. All right, there is an Amtrak station. It's connected with the Empire Builder route. So it does arrive in the evening and it takes off in the evening, uh, pretty much every day on schedule. Now, the Greyhound bus leaves about four o'clock if you wanted to catch that to Missoula. Uh, sometimes that can be a bit iffy on the Greyhound due to schedules. Also, when it comes to Uber, there are some Uber and there are Lyft drivers here, although there's not many. Now, when it comes to getting a rental car, good luck on that. It's basically booked out months in advance. So getting a uh, rental car out here in Whitefish is going to be very difficult. If you can, bring your own vehicle. Now, when it comes to tours, most of the tour companies that I've called, they're booked out until August. So that just gives you some perspective about how busy the tourist industry is here and how much accommodation they have available. So I guess that tells you that there's opportunity to create a rental car business here. Uh, I would rent one right now for me if I could get it, but not really available. Hey, there's a look at some of the old stumps from Stumptown. The flora and fauna out here in Whitefish is beautiful. This tree right here, I have no idea what it is, but if I smell it, it smells very effervescent. 